are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should have shouted right there. Hallelujah. You should have shouted right there. Because the Bible says you are blessed. In your coming and in your going. You are blessed. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just worship you this morning, Lord God. We exalt you above all else, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you protect us, Lord God, as we move forward in the service, Lord God. We ask that you deliver, Lord God. You heal, Lord God. You set free, Lord God. Hallelujah. You do what you do, Lord God. Hallelujah. That you cover the congregation, Lord God. Meet them where they are, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord God. We come to you with repentant hearts, Lord God. Not with just words, Lord God, but in deeds. We truly repent, Lord God. Repentance calls for a change, Lord God. When you truly repent, Lord God, you change, Lord God. And we know, Lord God, that we ask that you continue, Lord, to change us from the inside out, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we take your words, Lord God, as the speaker comes. Lord God, we pray over the words, Lord God, that are going to come forth, Lord God. We pray over the praise and worship team, Lord God, as they usher in the spirit, Lord God. We pray that all hearts and minds are clear and open to receive what is going to come forth today, Lord God. And we ask all these things in your mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.
worship. Yes. Must worship. Yes. In spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. You got to know why you're worshiping. Yes. And we worship because Jesus Come on. is real. Yes. I can feel him in my hands. I literally can feel him in my feet. Yeah. Yeah.
the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Something about the name Jesus. Something about that name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. Oh, how I love, oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Sweetest name, y'all. It is the sweetest It is the sweetest name. Oh, I know. Some people say I'm crazy.
over and yes? We've told many things, even ourselves, yes. But on this morning, I dare you to give God a complete yes. God, we give you our all on this morning. We surrender everything to you.
for shouting out loud. And we're having a church online, amen? So we welcome you on this morning to the Vine Worship Center. We always do the welcome after praise and worship because we say, by now you don't feel welcome. The Holy Spirit came in and welcomed you himself, amen? He came in and wrapped his arms. Speak 
in the, in the midst of the people. He used his gift. Sojourner Truth, born 1797, deceased 1883. She knew that God's call was on her life to speak truth for a broken world. She wanted to break down the institution of slavery and work on behalf of the rights of women. Next, we have Dr. Miles Monroe, born 1954 through 2014, Bahamian evangelist and ordained minister who was an avid professor for the kingdom of God. He was an author, speaker, and leadership consultant. Even after his death, many continued to listen to the powerful leadership teachings of Dr. Monroe. Dr. Cindy Trim yes. is a powerhouse in God's kingdom yes. today. Yes. Her gift of intercession is one that literally makes hell tremble. That's right. She has dedicated her life to serving God and humanity. Her assignment is to groom leaders and spread the gospel. But of course, last but not least, our very own Bishop Maurice Johnson. <laughs> Bishop Maurice Johnson is not your typical minister of gospel. <laughs> His knowledge of the gospel has come from real life experiences, which ranges from going up in children's home to serving in the penitentiary. His first pulpit was the parking lot preaching the gospel wherever he goes. His zeal and excitement for the Lord lights up the room. He is known for his impactful sermons accompanied by his infamous phrases. Today, we honor Bishop Maurice for Black History Month. Amen. Let's welcome the man of God as he comes forth. And at the same time, we'll dismiss the children. You can head to the back. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Shoot, let's spark this piece back up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some glory. Man, turn me up. like David up in here. Wasn't the praise and worship team awesome this morning? Hallelujah. And I had this little giddy up on. I'm trying to hold my composure because I want to go crazy. I was getting ready to flip the script. Reminded me when I first got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. See, some of y'all know my testimony. I'm glory. Some of y'all don't, but I used to be a Muslim. I call myself a Muslim. I profess to be a Muslim, but I didn't sincerely embrace the Muslim faith. Uh -huh. Amen. But I was spiritually confounded. I was still trying to find my way. Something was pulling and tugging on me, but I didn't know what it was because y'all know how it was back in the day in church when they wore the nice hats and stuff. See, we were C and E Christians. Christmas and Easter. Your mommy bought us that suit on Easter, but I had my brother's suit from the year before. And I'm a little one. Glory. Then we would go to church and stuff. And, you know, I still didn't quite understand it. Amen. But one thing that I did notice that when we went to church and the way they threw down old school, they had testimony service. See, that's something that I, I don't see it too often right, right now. Right, right. Hallelujah. Amen. But first of all, we don't we know we have follow the protocol in order. Give an honor to God who's the head of my life. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I ain't going to take it back home to you. We need to follow the protocol. Hallelujah. Give an honor to our apostle 
and our pastor, our overseers, Apostle Eugene Brunson and Pastor Diane Brunson in New Haven, Connecticut. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. For my lovely wife, Pastor Toby Johnson. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. To all the ministers and deacons, we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Y'all crazy. And I like it. Because I'm crazy too. But isn't it wonderful to have a good time in the Lord? Isn't it wonderful to be able to come and you know, come on the inside and, and just be who you are and, and not pretend for the person that's sitting next to you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. I want to be in a place where I can be me. I don't want to stifle out nothing that God has placed on the inside of me because my inability to use what God has equipped me with might continue to keep the person next to me in bondage. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when we thought about I thought about the throwback service. I got my mouth up to this thing, man. It just don't taste good. Y'all got that spray on there. But y'all be safe. Don't do what I do. Hallelujah. Before I left, I put on the whole armor of God. And y'all know Isaiah 54 and 17 is one of my favorite scriptures. That no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Jesus. God Almighty. But when we thought about old school, I thought about through testimonies. And God just put it in my spirit. I'm going to go I'm gonna go through this. I'm going to try to move swiftly. You know, y'all you know, you know about it. Hallelujah. Because what we're going to do, we're going to testify today. Somebody put your hands together. We're going to testify today. We're going to make the devil out of a liar. See, because all the things that he tried to make you ashamed of what you've been through, we're going to expose the enemy today. Oh, Jesus. Don't start getting scared. Right, right. I'm about to say, Bishop, you got plenty to say. Yeah, but what if the devil start attacking me? That's what he's supposed to do. Stay on your face, stay in your word, and be ready. Oh, hallelujah. But God put this title in my spirit and it's, it's like a question. It is a question. Do you know the power of your testimony? Do you? Uh, okay, my glory to God. Sharing your testimony helps you heal and brings us closer together. See, the Bible talks about how could two walk together except they agree. See, we may not agree on much, but we can agree on the goodness of Jesus. When you look back over your life and the wonderful things that God has done in your life, oh God, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Hallelujah. Now, the Latin root for testimony is testis, which means witness. Compassionate witnessing of our personal series helps us recover and help others to do the same. Amen? Amen? You have to realize and understand that there's power in your testimony. That's right. Why do you think that the devil is always trying to make you shut your mouth? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because he knows that when you testify, you're going to set some captains free. Hallelujah. There are individuals attached to you in your destiny that are in bondage and your testimony is the key to their freedom. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I'll go ahead and uh, y'all not let it ain't the coffee now. Shoo. Hallelujah. See, and the enemy wants to convince you to believe that you're in bondage. So he can say something like a soul. You know, how can you possibly set someone free when you're locked up? The devil is a liar. Right. 
The Bible says that whosoever the Son set free is free indeed. Don't get standoffish. I need somebody that's receptive to God's word. Amen. Uh, I didn't come up here to win the sermon of the week. Hallelujah. I came to deposit something on the inside of you that you could apply to your life and help you to walk upright before a holy and sovereign God. Now, according to Webster's definition of the word testimony, it's a solemn declaration usually made by a witness under oath in response to an interrogation to interrogation by a lawyer or authorized public official. Then another one is firsthand uh, uh, authentication of a fact, an outward sign. A public profession of a religious experience. Almost like baptism. You know, you get baptized publicly to show, oh Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, baptism unites you with, with Christ. Amen. For some of you that don't know is that when you get baptized, you're united with him. Jesus a life, death, and resurrection. Did you know that? Hallelujah. So that's a religious experience, a public profession of a religious experience. Just like the disciples, they, they were there to witness everything that transpired with Jesus. They saw it all. And if you go to uh, Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 12 and 15, it talks about, oh, go ahead. Let me, let, me, let me read this real quick. Acts chapter 3, starting at verse 12, it says, you got to say amen. Y'all don't carry your Bibles no more. I bet your mama got one. One in glory. See what I'm trying to tell you? Hallelujah. They use their, my mama, the young folk, they use their phones. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, starting at verse 12. And it says, Peter saw his opportunity and addressed, and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us, as, at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? See, a miracle had transpired. And what, they, what Peter was immediately doing was saying, hey, you know what? Don't glorify us. Glorify God. Because we didn't have nothing to do with this. It's by the power of God that this individual was able to walk. Amen? Because see, sometimes we have the tendency to esteem the men and women of God over God himself. See, if the man of God, you, you introduce the man of God, we stand to our feet, we say, give God some glory, you sit sitting down. When it should be the opposite. You should be standing up for God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, verse 13, it says, For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, uh, dis despite uh, Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected the holy, righteous one and instead demanded to release a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are all witnesses of that fact. So they testify to what they've seen and experienced walking with God. See, that's why you got to understand that your testimony has power. See, you may not be able to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but one thing that I know, and I always say, nobody can tell you about your testimony. Nobody can tell you how good God has been to you. Nobody can tell you how God has brought you out and how God has brought you through. Nobody can tell you that it wasn't God that stopped you from committing suicide when you had a blood to your head. How God, how good God is to you. Right. Amen? Yeah. We also testify to God's power. Yeah. Amen. Redeeming grace. Amen? Redeeming grace in our new identity in Jesus Christ simply through our actions and choices that we make. You got to understand that you are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. Amen. The old man has to die. Amen. The old woman has to die. Amen. Because if you're testifying to one thing and living another way, you'll bring the gospel into dispute. And it will 
will essentially pull people away from God as opposed to drawing them closer. Oh my God. You got to understand that we have to give an account to God. And according to Romans 14, according to Romans 14 and 12, and what happens is you want to make sure that your life is adequately lined it up because I'm telling you, you're going to give an account to God and I promise you don't want that smoke. You don't want that. Amen? Yeah, that's right. Listen. Testimonies encourage others in their faith. I told y'all before, you may be the only Bible that people ever read. Amen? That's why it's highly crucial for Christians to share their testimony and also live a life that's in line with God's perfect will and plan for their lives. Amen? We don't want to walk one way and talk one way and walk the other way. Amen? Everything has to adequately line up like 12 o'clock. And glory. Because like it or not, folk is watching you. And they ain't watching you to see how good you walk. They watching you to see your spiritual imperfections. But Bishop, I don't want to be the poster boy or the poster person for the gospel. Too bad. You're it. God chose you. Get it in your head and get it in your spirit and walk in it. Hallelujah. Stop making excuses why you can't seem to line up. Well, the Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, for all that sin and fall short of the glory of God, you've been saying that for 10 years. When you going to use it? When you going to try to do the opposite of what you've been doing? God's trying to create something new in you. He said, behold, I do a new thing and now it shall spring forth. Can you not perceive it? I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We got more excuses than a joker going to jail. It's very important for us to testify in church. In church. Amen. So that way we don't be walking around here acting like we better than these uh, other people. Because see, if you don't share your testimony, nobody ain't going to know what you've been through. Hallelujah. And people just, a lot of people don't share their testimony because of pride. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I don't need him to know that I've been molested by my family members. I don't need him to know that, that I was a victim of abuse. My mama was an alcoholic. My daddy was on crack. So what? Okay. See, only God can turn a mess into a message. Only God can turn a test into a testimony. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You live on purpose. God created you for this reason. And he set you aside for a time such as this. Your mouth has been shut long enough. Now it's time to open it up and start testifying. Make that devil out of a liar. He's holding you in bondage. And don't try to tell us something that we want to hear. We said testify and not tell the lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God abhors liars. How you gonna ever, I just say all the time, how you ever gonna expose the enemy who is the father of lies when you are a liar yourself? You gotta put on your armor and put up that, tighten up that belt of truth. Hallelujah. Because truth is something not only that only girds up your loins, but truth is something that you have to walk in. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's important to testify in church. No, most importantly, it confirms our faith in God. The Bible says always give a reason for the hope that you have. The reason for the hope is that, that you have is based on everything that you've seen God doing leading up to where you are right now. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Testify of the good things God has done for you. Amen. Tell somebody. You know they used to say back in the day? <laughs> Tell a friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't underestimate them and keep them to yourself. Talking about what you're going through, your experiences. It's not for you. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, you know, he said that it's, this is not for me. This is for the benefit of those standing there around that they may believe that you sent me. Hallelujah. So when God uses you in that particular type of capacity,
capacity. It's not just for you. It's for the benefit of those that are connected to you. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. So don't underestimate them and keep them to yourself because it's for someone else to increase their faith. Amen. Because you don't know. I'm telling you, people are struggling mightily and they real good at hiding it. And I said time and time again, and it bears repeating, this is a selfless walk. Amen. 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 In Revelations chapter 12 and verse 11, it says, and they defeated him. Defeated who? The devil. The accuser of the brethren. The one that goes into the presence of God and accuses us day and night. They ain't going to do it, Lord. You know they're lying. They ain't going to do it. And that's what the devil tries to do. Every opportunity he gets, he tries to accuse us before God. And then he said it defeated him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. The critical blow to Satan came when the lamb, Jesus Christ, shed his blood for our sins. And what you have to understand and realize that the cross wasn't his fate. It was his destiny. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it pleased God to bruise him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't too much chicken and waffles. You didn't have no coffee. Ain't I mad at us because we ain't had no soda for you to wash it down. Hallelujah. No hot sauce. Shoot, we might have kept you up a little bit. <laughs> Glory to God. So the cross was his was his destiny. Amen. The victory is won by way of sacrifice. And that's the thing that you have to ask yourself. What are you willing to sacrifice? Jesus gave his life for you. What are you willing to do in exchange? Hallelujah. You know, he said that I give my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. Hallelujah. Reasonable service. So it's, it's the least that I can do. Because my mind trying to tell me that, that I'm not able to produce what I really need to produce to be able to be in right standing with God. When God said, stop trying to figure out any, everything and just walk with me. Stop trying to figure out everything and just suck with me. Stop trying to figure out everything and just trust me. Amen. God ain't calling us to try to figure something out. He said, I'm calling you to just trust me. You running around here, you can't trust God because everybody that's been connected to you done dogged you out and talked about you and stuff. Now you're dealing with trust issues to the point where you can't even trust the ruler of your soul. Hallelujah. But the victory is won by way of sacrifice. And I'm telling you, if you ain't made a sacrifice, you need to pray about it. I can't tell you what to do. You got to go ahead and establish your personal relationship with God so that you can hear from God and, and, and his instructions that he's going to give to you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Christ's death in our place. To pay for one's sins and the sacrifices we make because of our faith in him. That's why we'll make the sacrifices. Because we trust in him. Our faith and our confidence is in God. Not in ourselves. Because you're your worst enemy. You can believe in everybody else, but you can't believe in yourself. Speak a word of encouragement to everybody that keep calling you on that telephone. But when you hang up that phone, you trying to figure out what you going to do. Who going to call and encourage you? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we face the battle with Satan, we should not fear it or try to escape from it. Remember I told y'all, some of the things that you're going through in your life, you ain't seen the last of it till you start to learn how to deal with it. Stop being a punk and running. Because that's all you've done. That's why you haven't been in no greater place in the kingdom. You only get to a certain threshold, but then you retreat back. Because then those battles and, and those things start happening, those trials and tribulations, and you run like a cheap pair of stockings. And I'll go back to a cheap pair of stockings because it's thrown back Sunday. 
Y'all know y'all's hurrying up to go to church. Put a, I done put a run in my stocking. Hallelujah. Bless the living God. But we got to learn how to face our difficulties head on. You got to know, beloved, why are you so fearful? What has gotten into you? You know, God is God. Listen, God is sovereign. God, God he's a protector. Amen? He's, he's there with us every step of the way. Why should we think of what's going on in our mind that we think that we're always alone in situations we got to confront? God is with you. You have to get that thing in your spirit. Amen? We walk in faith, not fear. Amen? And we got to believe that God is going to do things in his appointed time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Right. But we should loyally serve Christ. Hmm. Loyally. Who alone brings victory. We have to be loyal to God. Amen? Amen. Because the thing is this. You've been, you've been empowered. Amen? You've been empowered. I'm telling you. And the devil ain't got no power. And y'all sitting over there let the devil just say anything. Well, we scared, bitch. The, the devil told me to say, did it happen? All right then. Jesus went and, and snatched the keys from him, stripping him of all power and authority. How you gonna be scared that you gonna go into the house and get electrocuted when there ain't no power? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Jesus. Amen. My God. Don't be afraid to testify. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, he said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and the heavenly host. Hey, look at somebody and say, ain't no shame in my game. No in my game. What I'm ready to do is expose the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you and listen, and you're, you got to realize too, your ability and your boldness. That's why I read that scripture in, in, in Acts chapter 3 because you know, Paul got bold. He got bold and addressed the crowd. You can't, you can't testify if you don't have no boldness. Because that means that you're scared. And the devil, you know the devil going to try to fight you on every word that come out your mouth. Because he wants you to be a liar like him. <coughs> Hallelujah. But you got to stand strong and firm on your testimony. Ain't no devil in hell or on earth going to stop me from testifying to the goodness of God. And that testimony is so important because I'm telling you, somebody right now is going through what you've been through. And guess what? God is using you right now to set them free. Amen. But do you have the boldness to testify? Yes, God. Do you have the cliche, oh God, to stand to your feet? And make that devil out of who he truly is. A liar. Who got a testimony? Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Give God some glory for it. Come on and testify. You're taking it back right now. If you got a testimony, you better stand up and get ready to come up here. Go ahead. I continue to do 
do for others, continue to continue to pour out because I thought that was the right Jesus thing to do. I thought that pouring out so much of myself till I was empty mm. was doing God's will. Mm. And I was being everyone's God because mm. I did not have any God in my life. Mm. Wow. I went through certain sexual encounters and drug and suicide, PTSD, postpartum. Mm. And I just, literally everything you could imagine, every, you could list off. And I said, God, why am I going through this? Why are you bringing me through the ringer? And I was like, because he allowed me to talk to everyone where they were at. I've been through STDs. You cannot imagine what I've been through. And he told me to say something. I knew I was coming up. Then I knew it. I was like, let me just find the scripture because I don't know where it's at. Let me Google it. Um, Someone that's going through something, it has to be an STD, I don't know. But he said, don't give that which is holy to the dogs. Neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Now he told me that a while ago, and I was like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, they dogs, they dogs. Right, right. <laughs> they dogs, Lord. But I'm going to say it again so you, you can hear it. Don't give that which is holy. You are holy. That's right. You are holy. That's right. Jesus. To the dogs. To those the ones that say, hey, girl, you looking good. To the ones that throw just that little piece of satisfaction, right. that gratification that she was talking about, that right. instant gratification. Do not throw. Do not give away mm. what is holy mm-hmm. to the dog. Neither throw your pearls. Those are Precious right. before the pigs, lest they triple it because they do not know your worth. That's right. Mm. right. My God. My God. That's them right. under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. That will tear you to pieces. Not only your mind, but your body, everything, your mental health. Yes. So I don't know who needed to hear that. Glory to God. But I'm coming up here to say this. After all that I've gone through. That's right. I know God is good. That's right. Yeah. Any time that I was obedient, He showed me that He's good. I have no job, none. My husband lives across the street somewhere. <laughs> and guess what? God has paid my bills every time. So he took care of my children. I was able to shop. Yes. I've been able to eat what I wanted. I've been able to do more. I've had more money this year and last year than I've ever had. Woo! I've given more than I've ever given. Yes. Yes. I've provided for people and, and I didn't know where my money was coming from. Go ahead. I was Jesus. negative. My cards was maxed out. Do you know he's paid my cards three times? Jeez. How? I was not responsible. Oh. And he still provided for me. Jesus. He gave me free furniture. Come Y'all on. had nothing when I moved. Say that. A week later, nobody Say that. would know. They're like, oh. man, your house is nice. Say that. He gave me the best view. I just, I can't tell you enough how God provides if you just trust him. Oh and as much as I didn't want to come up here, I know someone needs to hear oh, yeah. it. Yes. I know he's doing great things. Yes. He's providing me with family. Yes. Yes. Family, like I can't even, I had no family. I would love everybody. He's providing me spiritual parents, and I'm like, I don't know if I should call them. I would call them. And they call back. God calls back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all I gotta say. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Give God some glory for that testimony. Hallelujah. See, she talked about them STDs, them spiritually transmitted diseases. You better watch your back. You got a devil that's on your heels and he wants to destroy you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who else got a testimony? Come on. Shoot. We rolling right now. Hallelujah. You don't taste that chicken. (laughs) Well, we gonna testify to that chicken that you cooked. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Well, I'm I'm thankful. Uh, 
on so many levels. Amen. My God. Go ahead. In 2016, while at home, in 2016 while I was home, was laying down and started feeling really bad and I couldn't feel my legs. So I went to get out of bed, fell on the ground. Back then, I don't know if y'all remember Uvu. I was on Uvu, a video call with a friend of mine that lived in Mississippi. And they said I hit the ground. So they called from Mississippi to the house to tell somebody to come and check on me. Well, I ended up waking up, the sun was up, I got back in the bed. They came and finally knocked on the door, I said, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. And I realized that my head was still hurting really bad. So I laid there in a while, just a little while longer. Finally got up, I was walking sideways, whole nine yards. But I wouldn't go to the hospital or anything. Long story short, I walked around for three days. I finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I drove myself to Health Central. Um, when I got there, I was not um, in the, they put me in the MRI. I was not in the MRI, not even a minute. They came flying out. We gotta fly you to another hospital. Your head is full of blood, you're bleeding. Jesus. Long story short, in 2016, I woke up six days later. Wow. wow. I had an aneurysm, oh, wow. stroke, wow. bowel obstruction, wow. lung failure. Jesus. I woke up six days later. Yeah. I'ma tell you, I was one of those ones that tap danced with the devil. Mm. I was tongue talking, knew the word. Mm. But if God would have took me in 2016, Woo. I would have bust hell wide open. Jesus. My God. And I tell my friends, I say, when I was landing, if I would have been laying in that casket, y'all would have been crying on me, oh, she can sing, she can do this, that, and the other. If God would have let me talk for a few minutes, I would have said, y'all, I'm in hell. Yeah. Because God allowed me to see hell. Ooh. I Ooh. saw hell. It was so bad, I did not even want to go to sleep anymore when I finally came to. Mm. The stench God. of it, the sound of it, the screams, the rooms that he took me in Jesus. that I saw. It is real. And I made a little joke with God. You know, I was like, you know, God, you couldn't let me see a little nightlight or something. <laughs> you couldn't let me get some of the stories. You know, I saw my grandma. And I, no, I saw hell. Mm -hmm. That was in 2016. In 2020, of uh, the end of January, I had another brain surgery. I had a craniotomy coming from here all the way back. My Lord. And the surgery was only supposed to be about three hours. When they went in, they found other things wrong that they didn't even know. So it ended up being over 12 hours. God kept me through that procedure. I'm thankful. The reason why I'm so thankful that I'm able to stand here because the life that I lived was foul. I was a heavy, heavy drinker. I was a pill popper, heavily into sexual perversion. If I can just be real. I popped pills, molly, all. I did it all. I did it all. And I was still, because I was one of those ones that after a while, I just did it privately. I was that one after a while that I just wanted to die. I didn't even want to live anymore. As good as God had been to me, I was through. I wanted to give up. I have a lot, my story is just deep. And I just felt like, it's, what can you do with me, God? It's just nothing. I would lay in the bed sometimes and say, God, would you just let me go to heaven? Could you just let me die tonight? That's how I would do. I would take a lot of pills and just lay there and please, please, please. I'd wake up like it's another day. But. God has been good to me. Yeah. He kept me. He is a keeper. Yeah. He is a yeah. healer. Yeah. He is a deliverer. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I keep a praise on me. That's I have right. to praise him. That's right. Right. Because if he would have took me to any of those times, I would have went to hell in 2016. It would have been it. Yeah. With my, like I said again, with my tongue talking, knowing the word itself. Because mm. right. I had a form of God. Oh. 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 Oh.
we didn't even know why we were pregnant. Honestly, oh I'm like, I'm 35. This is not what I wanted. And oh 35, I'm, I have a career. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, um, but I was stagnant. Mm. I was complacent. Oh I was comfortable. And God had to open me up. He had to get my attention. He had to um, take me out of my slumber, mm. in a sense. Thank my God. God. And um, that got us. That got our attention. Both of our attention. And, you know. Pregnant, well, I already have twins. You've seen my twin boys, Noah and Nehemiah. And I was just not looking forward to be pregnant. But then we started getting used to the fact that we were pregnant and this is going to happen. Um, just knowing on Christmas Day we lost that baby. God let me know, although you lost the baby in the physical, you're still pregnant in the spirit. You're still pregnant with her. He said that you are still pregnant. Not only are you pregnant, you're overdue.
this one, this one was real bony. No medicine, no nothing. They went inside of me, they took it out. I had to sit through that. They gave me an ibuprofen 800 and said, you'll be okay, you'll be okay. I wasn't okay, I wasn't okay. I still felt lonely. Um, 2020 was a hard, hard year. That's when all the COVID, all the different things happened and I just felt like, you know, God was calling me and I just needed to get closer to him. And my God, my God, I just, yes. needed, I just needed him, I just needed him to let me know I wasn't alone, yes. my God. and I was all alone up here, and you know, I didn't choose to move away, and, but I think I thought that was the best thing, just go and hide, you know, I thought I could hide from God, but I could hide from everything, but whew, it wasn't, it, I met Liz, yes, Liz Garvey, hallelujah, she touched me in so many ways. She kept me near the cross. She was my, she was my God. Not my God, but you know, she was my God. God. She was, she was the one who led me here. She led me to this church. And I have to thank her for getting me here. And I also thank Christiana for inviting me to church. I made a list for 2021 of all the things that I wasn't going to do no more, all the things that I am going to do. First thing on my list was to find a church, find a home church, go to prayer, go to do everything in God, get wrapped up in God so you can understand, you know, who, who God is. Because I knew God, I was in a church and everything as a child, but I didn't really know who God was until I walked into this place. I just want to say thank you, Pastor Toby. Thank you, Bishop, for welcoming me. Thank you, the whole, say, everybody, thank you for welcoming me. And I really feel like home. I feel like this is home. And I just found a new place in God, and I'm closer to God. And I can just say that on last week, I don't remember the day, but God was telling me that, hey, you can't have no more sex. So last week, I decided no more sex until I'm married. like me. And that led me to doing all kinds of things that I didn't want to 
want to do for money. Say that. I was prostitute. Say that. On the low. Say Nobody that. didn't know it. Okay. I got pregnant. I had an abortion. You know how long I carried that thing? I carried that uh, thing until two years God. ago. God delivered me in Ooh. my dream. If I just use my body, they would like me. Yes. I was so mad at my daddy. I said, you what? You didn't fight to see me. You didn't fight to be with me. You didn't fight to come see me. Every time he came to see me, he had to try to sleep with my mom. My God. He wasn't coming to see me. He was coming to use my mom. Mm -hmm. With that controlling, manipulative spirit. It's the spirit. Manipulation is the spirit. Yeah, witchcraft. Come on. And you get what they didn't deal with. I had to deal with. But I'm coming to tell you right now, it stops here. Suicide stops here. The devil tried to take my son, it stops here. He tried to take my kids, it stops here. I am not fatherly. God said I am adopted into a kingdom. I am a child of a king. I'm a daughter of a king. I am royalty. I will walk with my head as such. I will talk to myself as such. You can't on everything. You're going to have to get some help sometime. I have a therapist that is the best thing I ever did in my life. Hey, Do you know the release yeah. I get when I talk to this lady? My God. She said, Tamika, your awareness is on 10. You need to be teaching this stuff. Self-care. You need to be teaching this stuff to people. My God. My God. Baby daddies that did me like dirty like a dog. I am the I'm so loyal, y'all. I am so loyal. I was so consistent to the wrong things. Jesus said, be consistent to me. Be loyal to me. Trust me. God used me to minister to my son. My son is sitting back there because of me praying for him. But you know what he had to realize? He had to make a relationship with God. He had to make a decision to serve God. He had to walk right. You got to choose righteous when it's feel when it's wrong. Yes. My God. Always choose the right way. It's like Renisha said, God would never let me go too far in and too far over here. He will always bring me back. Uh, one of my friends invited me to church in 10th grade. She said to me, come to church with me. And ever since then, I used to call it my sixth sense, but my discernment always on 10. My God. Always on 10. You don't have to say one thing out of your mouth. My spirit is going to pick it up. My God. I might not know what it is, but I know something ain't right. Mm -hmm. That's my discernment. That's the Holy Spirit. God called me at a young age. I just kept running from him. My God. You can run, but you can't hide. My God. He is going to win in the end. My God. Yeah. He is going to win. I'm telling you right now, God is good, y'all. God is good for all the hell I've been through. I do not want to go back to something that I cried and prayed and cried and prayed and cried and prayed, and prayed for God to deliver me. I'm not going back to that. I'm not going back to drinking. I'm not going back to popping pills. I'm not going back to fornication. I'm not going back to that. I'm not accepting nothing that what I'm worth. I know what, what I'm worth. Hallelujah. I know who I am. I know who Glory, the fires in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on. I, I got to get it out now. Jesus.
God always gives back more than what you lost. For what you sow in tears. In 2008, I got married. And God specifically told me not to get married. Wait on God. God said, don't get married. You're not ready. There's things in you I'm trying to birth and fix. But in my disobedience and in my, I've always struggled with loneliness. Like, I would be in a house full of people and felt lonely. Room full of people and felt like it was just me. So I got married. I was a really good person in that I was a good man prior to that. But that marriage broke me. It broke some things in me. I found myself suicidal. I was sleeping in my car. So, I was drinking, I was, I was struggling, I, I blamed God. At that time, I started becoming a womanizer. I had met the best thing that ever happened to me, but I couldn't be faithful because I was broken. She loved me with all my imperfections. My wife showed me the love of God. I didn't know what it looked like before that. Fast forward. It's been, Sister Caleb, when you were testifying, it broke my heart and I told my wife that I can't help but think about my daughter. Many of you see me with my boys, with my sons, but I have a daughter that's 10 years old. She'll be 11 in July. I haven't seen my daughter in years. So to think that someone could Touch my baby. You guys don't know how many nights I cry about my baby. I have constant anxiety because of things like that. So, so, I never told my wife two years ago we were expecting a baby. <laughs> we had a <laughs> we had a gender reveal. And all the while we were at the gender reveal, our baby had died. And God is so good, she was walking around with the dead baby on the inside of her. And nothing happened to me. I begged God on the way to the hospital, God, please let the baby live. Please, please let the baby live. Please. And as clear as day, I heard God say no. And I broke down crying. I said, God, you know I wanted this. He said, I want you. I had been around church most of my life but to be honest I hadn't been serious with God I've been scared to go too deep because I saw church be played out 
And like Danny said, a form of godliness. I saw people just, if I could be honest, I was in church, but I hated church. Because some of the most hurt that I've ever experienced was at the hand of people who say they love God. Every church we've been to, I found a way to buck against authority. I couldn't run no more. Every time Bishop would ask me to come, God wouldn't let me come in the condition I was in. Because he knew that you would love me the right way. I talked to Bishop more than I talked to my dad. Not that I ain't got a good father. He's just, it's just always what I wanted, somebody that wants to be around me. I'm just so thankful for this church because it ain't about singing, it ain't about none of that. Y'all care about my family. And that to me, we were out of church for what, three years, man? We said we weren't going back to church. We would visit, but we were done with church. Like, done with church. But since I've been here, the level of spiritual maturity that I've gained and my wife has gained, I'm just so thankful to God, Bishop, man, for you and Pastor Toby. Like, seriously. Like, last year, I thought I was going to die with the anxiety. You know how many times I called you saying, hey, man, I don't think I can do this. And then Pastor Toby forgot to allow you to feel what I was actually going through. That let me know that God connected me to some people that don't just care about what I can bring to the table. Man, you know how many folks, I came here and I was just like, man, if this don't be like every other church, I don't wanna be here. And God has blown my mind. It's greater than what I've expected. So my testimony is, after all the hurt, after all the pain, after all the loss, I can seriously and honestly say my family and I are experiencing our greater. Even with what the enemy's trying, we're experiencing greater. And the suffering of your present time is not worthy to the glory that God is going to reveal. That's why when you sung that song, that's my song. I can't praise you enough I owe you my life yes. I couldn't praise you enough yes. I owe you my life yes. I can't praise you enough I owe you my life Couldn't praise you enough yes. Even God some glory. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I said I would never do this again. Come into church. I just
just didn't want to do it anymore. I'm a preacher. I'm a prophet. I know I'm anointed. But I didn't want to do it anymore. You know what I've learned in coming out of my storm is everybody think they know me. Right. <laughs> but they don't know me. <laughs> you know, there are times when I'm by myself and I just cry. My God. I don't cry about church. I don't cry about my family. I don't cry about the things that I no longer have. Mm. I cry because of what I've been exposed to as a child. Mm. My God. Standing on the milk crate in the club that I shouldn't be in and I'm 15. And the police won't let me out the DJ booth, but I'm that good. The money that I made as a child, traveling on private planes and police escorts around the world, television, before I'm out of 12th grade. I didn't even finish my last nine weeks of school because I was in Europe. And then God came knocking on my door. At the moment, I was about to get my own record deal. Some of them heard some of my testimony before, but I'm going to go deeper now. I was in Dallas Austin studio every day, every single day, on Northside Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. T.I. there, Sierra in college, CeeLo there. My uncle hung with this guy Block, Jeezy and all these guys, they come from a group called Boys in the Hood. We hung in McKinneyville, Zone 3. That's what I was doing as a child. I had a best friend, his name was Ike. He was one of the biggest drug dealers in my neighborhood and in my community since I was a child. He never would let me sell drugs. He cooked up sheets of cocaine like you said, like you make macaroni and cheese with. Wow. But he would never let me do it. You know, so I became this great, grandiose DJ and I started traveling and I'm going somewhere. And then when I was about to make my first CD of my own, a dude named Euclid Gray, he played the, the, the preacher, the pastor, and meet the Browns, the play. He led me to Christ. He said, young man, you hear what you're saying on that CD? He said, I want you to go listen to it. And Jackie Faye, they always helped him because he was just a little Christian guy back then. They burnt CDs. They was helping him because he was a, like a Christian guy. But he said, Kimber, I want you to, I want you to hear it. Like, I want you to listen to it. And I listened to it. And I said, that's not the message I want to send to my daughter. I want to tell you about me. So I said, I'm never rapping like that again. They all come out the studio, man, you crazy. We brought you up here and all this night. You talking about God. We was just in Magic City last night. Yeah. So I came back home to Florida. And I had a vision in jail. It was like a, a transformative vision where it said, Pastor Reba needs you. Pastor Reba needs you. I said, well, who is Pastor Reba? Then I got a pamphlet about a church called New Destiny and pastors that. So I said, when I get out, I'm going to go to this place. Mm -hmm. So I went there, long story short, and I'm about to get to it. I got a job there. I ended up working there, and I started chaplain with my pastor. Ultimately, he passed away. He died from drug addiction. That broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Then I started going through it. Um, off and on in my relationship. And I'm going to use I statements. That's what they teach you in rehab. You don't talk about other people. You talk about yourself. So I started doing drugs. And people had this connotation about me. Oh, he don't want to work. He don't want to do this. You know, they don't know nothing about me. My work that I've done, I can't do it in God. So that's always been my fight. <laughs> my fight is, is, is am I going to go back in that club or, or go back to the world or am I going to stay with God? But as I stay with God, I 
go through hell outside of my house. I'm preaching and my brother shot on Facebook. Bleeding out his arm. Everybody posting it. I just finished preaching a funeral. I come from the hood. I've been shot myself. I don't want to remember. No, I want to go up there by Big B's where I know they at and bang, bang. You don't know how that feel? Mama losing her mind, getting butt naked in the house. Snowing powder. You trying to get your mind right. Mm. Come on, come on, come on. You don't know how that feel? Mm. Preaching and getting high. Mm. Getting high because I don't want to deal with the pain of life. Yeah. My God. Come on. Been in rehab three times. The third time I told my wife I was going to Atlanta by myself. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. She thought it was because I messed up again. No, it wasn't because of that. It was because I was tired of me. I don't know about y'all, but I done looked in the mirror at myself before and said, boy, I'm tired of you. All right. I'm tired of you. Brandon ain't got to be tired of you. Mary Jane ain't got to be tired of you. I'm tired of you. So, I'm living downtown Atlanta, and I'm telling y'all about me. Because you see, um, everybody think they know you, but they don't know you. That's all right. I'm living downtown in Atlanta on Marietta Street. I'm in a shelter. You can't really bring the five outfits. You got to smell people farts. You got crazy people. I mean, they tripping up in here. Yeah. 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 But God said, I'm teaching you how to persevere. Yeah. My God. Cause I always ask God, what in the, what in the world, what in the world is going on? Mm. So long story short, my wife comes to Atlanta, and I start dibbling and dabbling again. Cause we going through stuff. My sister-in-law gets killed. I mean, the enemy is still attacking the family. Jesus. One day, I goes to this gas station. A boy robbed. He pulled a pistol on me. This when my life started. This when I started changing. Still struggling, but this when I started changing. I saw where he went. So I told God every day I'm going to kill him. And I got cousins in Lithonia. That's not far from Atlanta. I said, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to give me some fire. And I'm going to go back over there. And, and I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. act like I'm from 700. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back home. But at work, God told me you can't do that. And I just cry. I'm working, pushing, pushing models, crying, because I feel tried. But God told me, you can't, you can't do that. And I'm going somewhere with what I'm telling you. God told me, you can't do that, Kelvin. You cannot do that. I got home after work. I stood in front of the car. I was still angry. God told me, you can't do it. This is when I learned that God was breaking. The drugs were still present every now and then. So we moved back to Orlando. And it's just like the familiar spirits. And I, I got down on myself again. And I started dibbling and dabbling. And I got myself in trouble with my wife. Got myself, just got myself in trouble. But what I came to realize is through it all, and this is what I was trying to get you to. God has always been there. Yeah, yeah, amen. One night, me and some of my friends, we were getting high at a hotel. And this girl hanged herself. Yeah. I mean, she defecating. They say, like, when you about to die, that's the last thing that happened. Yeah. I said, not today. And I said, you shall live. And I felt the big cloud come from behind me. And her eyes opened up. And I raised her up. What I'm telling you is, is God has always been there. And I just learned this. And I'm going to sit down. Because this is why I came here today. I learned that it's not about rehab. It's not about all the paperwork. 
It's about discipline. Every girl since I've been separated from my wife, I told them, don't call me. Don't text me. I don't want to confide. I don't want to talk. I don't want to have conversations. I don't want to do nothing that's not anointing. Because I've learned that it's about discipline. Come on now. And the Holy Ghost told me, Kelvin, you've been in the belly of the well. I wrote this down on last night. I was talking to God, and he showed me an image of my wife. She had on the red dress. I knew exactly the season. I knew exactly the time. I knew exactly what was going on. At this time, I was in trouble again. <laughs> my God. And I'm, I'm going to take my seat. But I took some advice from some people. And the advice wasn't the right advice. I was supposed to let my wife continue with the church. Wow. That's what God showed me. My wife was supposed to continue. And I was supposed to stand firm. And stay in position. God showed me it's the moment you got out of position. That the devil ate you alive. So I want to I wanna just say my testimony today is. I survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No matter what I lost. The church. Relationship situation, I survived it. Amen. I got my mind. Amen. I got my life. I got a friend that overdosed yesterday. Jesus. And late man. Jesus. Yesterday, the girl died. The boy is in ORMC right now. His name Reagan. He up. But she died. My Lord. I survived. And that's my testimony, y'all. Come on, let's give us some glory. Hey, for all of you that have been through something, I'm letting you know, too. You survived. That's why you're here today. This is why it's important for you to testify to the goodness of God, to let somebody else know just how good God is. Hallelujah. We're going to have Brother Lightdale come up real quick. Those on, yeah. Come on up, Brother Lightdale. Did you have a shirt dress on? You sure? You want to say something. Come on. All right, praise God. Come on, Deacon. I do thank everyone for um, their testimony. Touches me in many ways. I'm sure it touches everyone on, on, this, on this day. Um, I sat here, I was like, you know, God, everybody testimony, cut my eyes. What I have a good testimony I got. He said, no, no, no. You're still standing. Amen. You're still here. Amen. And through this, through the years of now me being 30. By the grace of God, I've been through some things. Some may know, um, but I don't look like what I've been through. That's right. Amen. Come on, Amen. I survived, right? That's um, right. Um, I just, I was like, well, Lord, what is stuff? What you doing? What else? What else? You know, so you know, so I, just stuff from my childhood, I guess, just real quick. You know, I, I went through it. Was, I'm the baby of six. Children, the baby, the youngest, and um, my mother was on drugs. Thank God she's uh, recovered. God got her through. My father, I never knew. I never knew my father. From birth, my mother said she never signed the birth certificate. She just went away. Um. Growing up, I just, I was confused um, about my life as far as everyone has their pops and, you know, you have the home and the mom. I had no mom. My mom was there, but I hadn't had my mom there. So I was adopted, okay? And I was adopted as a baby into a family. And um, through my life, I just wondered, 
Who loves me? My God. No one loves me, right? Jesus. My God. Jesus. My God. My God. God. Bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. My God. So my back always been against the wall. I feel like I have to, you know, defend for myself and, you know, with this road and, and this world and, you know, growing up in New York City, the Harlem lifestyle. Uh, it, it, it's rugged, you know, you follow the crowd, right? But I, I remember my, my aunt used to, you know, send me to Sunday school and everything, and then I, I remember um, as I got older to, I'd say 15, 16, I started to dabble in weed and marijuana and uh, drinking and all that, you know, stuff, and, and you know, fun to be player type guy and all that other good stuff, right? Um, but I remember getting high every day. It, it went from one blunt to two blunts to three blunts, and then drinking from one day to Friday, and then every day trying to introduce my, what I was going through. Right. I used to hang out with three young men in New York City. I don't say their names. Um, Anyway. Yeah, I'm say so I used to hang out with three, uh, two young men, myself being three, and um, they were my best boys, my friends, right, homeboys. And every time we used to get high in the buildings, I just remember, I can't do this for the rest of my life. There's something more than just what I'm doing. I got sick and tired. And so when I got 18 and, and, and I was like, God, and I always do acknowledge God. So I said, God, I said, whatever you do, I just need you to save me. Like, do something. Um, and, and, and so I got tired. And I remember going back to church because I always knew that God got me. Right. Mm. I used to say, when, when you know, because like I said, I'm, 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 I'm all over the place because I'm trying to you know, hurry up. But, but I remember, like I said, I was down talking. You're dumb, you're stupid, and you know, all type of stuff where, you know, being adopted and again, you don't feel loved, and, and so you feel like everybody got their family and all this crazy stuff, and, and you just feel like outcast, right? Outcast. Um, and so I just knew, though, in my spirit, no matter what happened, I used to say, God got me. Right. And guess what? He did. He still has me. That's right. Because I'm still here. That's right. Yeah. I got 18, I left my mom, my aunt's house. I want to I smell, I want to I start smelling myself. I want to be a man. And so I left. I didn't want to listen to coming to the house at 11 o'clock no more. I want to be my, do my own thing. Realized, you know, I didn't have a place to go to. <laughs> and so I spent a good year or two in the streets. No one knew, like I said, I always looked the part, played the part, I'm the type of guy where I was looking good on the outside, but I'm hurt from the inside. Yeah. Yeah. And no one knows, but it was live, so what? Um, I used to sleep on rooftops. I used to remember have my clothes, and this is at 18, you know, 18 rooftops. I used to put it in one of the buildings, and then I used to go to my friend's house, wash up, clean up, and all that, on top of, you know, going to stores, stealing and all that crazy stuff, right, trying to just put the image. It's a vibe, right? Um, and I used to go outside, and I used to talk to the girls, all this type of stuff, and I used to be the one where, because I, I ain't have a house, I'm trying to go to your house at night, I'm trying to listen, make sure I can go to somebody's house, and I try to go to that rooftop, because in that rooftop, sometimes things used to happen. You know? And I didn't, I didn't want those things to happen. I didn't want those things to happen. And so, wow, wow. Um, come on, man, come on. And so, you know, it's when you listen when you when you you know when you don't want to do something, but you gotta do it. Ah! Just to survive. Just to survive. Just to survive. Just to survive. Right? So, cause it wasn't me. I know what I liked. It wasn't me. Jesus. Right? Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Man. Um. And so, in the midst of all of that. So God, you know me. You got me. My mom recovered. And I told my friend, I said, bro, I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm going home. I remember at my exit 
of going home and talking to Jesus and going back to church, there was, I, I, I used to ride the trains and I, I, was, I was by myself and I was, like I said, trying to, I was on the rooftop, I wasn't on the rooftop, I was, I was in, 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 in his house. And I remember, I don't know how I got there, but I remember going to some lady house, lady opened her door for me, because y'all always made it right. And I slept on the floor. And I, I started to feel pain in my belly. I started to feel some kind of pain, aching pain, like burning. I mean, I was like, I think, I thought I had like, um, not coronavirus, right? But I thought I had, um, like I was food poisoning. But it was something growing and something happening on the inside. And as I, it's so much of a glimpse, like it's, it's a glimpse though, but, but I knew God was doing something. After getting out of that and, and, and getting on my feet, and, I, and my mother, I called my mother, I said, Mom, I said, I can't do this no more. And I said, uh, she said, well, baby, come home. We've been praying for you. We've been praying for you. Left, went, left uh, PA, I mean PA, I left New York City, went to PA. Went to PA, I was very short. Thought, uh, uh, I met, met my wife. We had three lovely children together, and you know, four, and she has four as well, and so it was seven kids. All this time though, and I got saved, I went to job call, got my GED, got my trade of carpentry. I knew I wanted to do something with myself. God got me out of that, right? And so, as I'm in my marriage right now currently, let's fast forward now, right? Fast forward my marriage currently right now. Uh, then 12 years, well, seven years married, five together. And um, I come to a point where I always had a heart for God. Once he saved me, I knew I wanted to live my life for the rest of my life. I wanted to give him my life. I went to Bible college, and, and, and I, but I left because I had children. And so, you know, I always wanted to pursue God because I knew he had a calling on my life. Sometimes, though, like my brother said right here as well, Brother Tracy said, I don't know what this confirmation was, but I know I'm married because I had children, and, I, and because I didn't want to see my kids grow up without a father because I didn't have a father. Mm. So that's, that's good. Good. so 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 that's why I, I, I made the commitment, and I thought I loved, loved I loved my wife. I thought I listen. I thought I, I thought I did. I, I thought I did. But until currently, I'm in the midst of. As papers are on the table trying to figure out where, where I'm going with this, Lord, I need guidance. I need help. But I knew for the 12 years of being in what I'm in, no progress, mm. no growth. Mm. You got to learn sometimes you can't stay somewhere where you're stuck, where you're, you, you, you can't elevate right. when you feel God's taking you to the next level. Right. Sometimes you got to let go and let God. So here I am, contemplating. Where do I go, God? Do I, do I leave my, my family? Am I, am, I, am I a man of God if I leave to pursue you? Like Brother Tracy said, the thought of even leaving my, my family and, and having somebody else in the home and then they don't know what's going on. So I'm like, what do I do? Right, right. I learned to just trust God. And this song touched my heart right here. I'm not gonna sing it, but Brother Tracy, you probably follow me on this one. And, and, and it just said, what do you do? When your back is against the wall, what do you do? Stand, stand tall by uh, uh, Charles Jenkins. Hold on, keep the faith. Oh, that new song. Keep the faith. And my whole thing right here is, my testimony is basically is this. I got to keep the faith, no matter what it look like. That's right. I got to keep doing what I'm doing in the Lord, no matter if people are going to go with me or not. Because I know, right, this is why I know. I examined my life. I examined my life. I said, Lord, out of those three, you remove me out of that situation. Why? You kept me. Out of, you kept me, took me out of that situation. Why? 
And so I, all I know is I'm not a fool to know that God has called me. God has, God has called me, and, and, and I've been running. And, um, but I, I'm now here. Amen. I'm now here. Amen. And I accepted in 2020, obviously, you know, rough path. I accepted the call. I said, God, if I come to Orlando, that's why we came to this church. My wife and I we first started. We came here. And then that's when everything happened. And, you know, so I said, though, I got to be committed. I got to stay committed. I got to stay the course. No matter what happens, stay the course. But the real testimony is this. And this is to my part, my brothers and all that. Testimony is this. The reason why people are I'm probably gonna know my wife said people don't know why I just gotta even when I fall, even when I have crazy thoughts, even when I'm dabbing the pornography, even when I'm you know uh, 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 just just going through so much so many things, people like how did he go? How did he how did he just get through it? How did he continue to bounce back? How how how, how could you just I, I couldn't do what you do? How could you continue to seek God after all of this? And so I look back and say, that's the only father that I know. <laughs> because I didn't have a father. He is the only father that I know. That's what keeps me anchored in God. If anybody wanna know what keeps me anchored, what keeps me coming back, it's because I know that I know that he is the father of the fatherless. And so I gotta stay strong. And I gotta keep the faith. Yeah. And so I mean that's my whole thing. Yeah. Basically, man, keep the faith. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, on, on the, I know, right? Thanks for having me. Um, I'll say my testimony, but I hope it touched someone. I hope it helped someone. And uh, thank you, Pastor Tobin. Amen. 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 lashes on today. The blue for the lashes. Everybody just bless me. But what I thank God is first of all for Bishop for opening a platform on a Sunday morning. Or a lot of times you could only do this on a Friday or something. And for everyone who came forward for being so authentic and know that you stomped on the devil's head on today. We are victorious. Things that people been holding on for years were able to experience freedom. And that's what it is in being in Christ, having freedom and liberty. It don't make sense to come to church and be all bound up. Amen? Amen. So we are about to dismiss. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. They'll get one over to you. If you already submitted your offering by Cash App, that's great as well. There's different ways you can give.